What's up guys and welcome back to another FSP transmission video. Chevrolet TK1500 and the customer dropped it off because he has a 700 R4 installed in it now. Now that transmission is built for comfortability and drivability but he's wanting to thrash on this thing a little bit more than that 700 R4 can take. So first off we gotta take this drive shaft out and then we gotta bring this thing under here, prop that up, pull this out, get the hose and bolts out, pop these lines off and then convert. So just this drive line area is, is what we're taking out. I want to do First thing that you want to do when your vehicle's up off the ground is undo your shifting linkage here. That way you can freely spin the drive shaft and get all four bolts off the back. This thing normally has a cotter pin on it and a pair of needle nose. You can bend those arms back and pull it out. Now you want a little table Put your parts on, and you want a little wire basket just so you don't lose anything. That's really important right there. So now this bracket holds in this linkage, and this linkage just pops out now. Now make sure your transmission's in neutral. I like to take these off at six o'clock. So once you click your, tr your transmission out into park, that's locked and you can get your 7 16 wrench on there and pop these loose. Two clicks clockwise or counterclockwise. Cook okay. two clicks uh, counterclockwise. That should do it. Right, now they're all broke loose. Sean, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you. Oh, thanks. First cameraman. Uh -huh. I've been doing everything by myself. <laughs> 22,000 freaking <laughs> subscribers by myself. Oh, with a tripod and a phone. Tripod and a phone. Before that, it was a freaking, uh, uh, a dang direct input drum for a 350. <laughs> And that yellow, uh, where's it at? Where is it? I think it's outside. This thing right here. <laughs> Look, I'll show you. <laughs> I used to freaking stack this thing like this. <laughs> like this director on like that. And you can prop your phone in the little crevice here and you can just rotate it around and do whatever you want, I guess. I also use it lift up every morning too. Seriously. <laughs> Poor man's camera tricks. And workout tricks. Uh -huh. Get this electrical tape ready. Don't mind my dirty hands or me biting this. Right. Good 
just like that. Because these things, these things can come off and there's little needle bearings in there. And once you lose one of them, good luck finding the extra one, especially for these old trucks like this. So you gotta be really careful. Put you some tape around it. It's probably not enough, but you get the gist just to keep them on there while you take this out. Bucket two, you'll get some fluid here. Just put it right below it. And this will slide right out. Be careful right here. Even if you got tape on it, still put your fingers on it. Now the 700R4 is the exact same length as a long tail nine inch tail shaft turbo 350. So lucky for us, we're just gonna drop this one and put that long tail right back in its spot. And it'll fit just the way it should. Um, next thing you wanna do is take all your electrical wires off here. Your 700R4 only has two electrical spots. Uh, that's for your speedometer and then for your lockup switch up here. So you've got this little clip this one's electronic the old ones are the old ones are uh manual like mechanical put that clip back on there and then this pops right out well somebody broke that before that's not supposed to be like that oh uh, yeah there's supposed to be a clip supposed to be a clip right there that locks into the case and it's not on there the thing was probably leaking like a like a sieve so next is this cross member right here and you want to get some pressure relief off the cross member so you can pull it out that's where your transmission jack comes in place. Don't skip leg day. I have been skipping leg day. <laughs> My legs look like little twigs, dude. My upper body looks pretty good. Oh, crap. Man. Sean. <laughs> Blooper reel. <laughs> Talking about. All right. Now you got a 15 millimeter nut right here. And normally just the impact, uh, if you got an air gun, yeah, that, that works too. Normally just impact and pop that little thing off. Little nut. Now you can jack the transmission up a little bit. There you go. Now that's relieved the tension off this cross member. Now we can pull these four nuts off here and remove the cross member. God, what was that speed TV? Yeah. Yeah, like the behind the scenes guys mm -hmm. on the, yeah, cause you'd like, what's up everybody? You know, like guys <laughs> with the big beard and stuff. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That'd be, I mean, that's me in 20 years. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, these are 11 sixteenths and you get the end of the wrench. Now these are angled. I know you ain't been skipping arm day. I didn't put this thing in. <laughs> I'm taking it out. It's a little support bracket here. It's got a half inch bolt on it. Um, there's three around it. I'm gonna take it off.
now we should be able to take it off. Work is a little tricky. You want to lower this a little bit, but you got to watch how far you lower it because you don't want to you don't want to pop that distributor up, up there at the top. Right here. These are your cooler lines, and they've got to come off so you can you know get your whole transmission out. But these things get really really tight. And they can get really, really annoying. And uh, I'm just saying, be careful and watch your knuckles. So you want to get a half inch wrench up in this way in front of it. This is really the best way to do it. And try to get a grip on it. Uh, that one broke free. Now flip your wrench over and do that again. The opposite side. Flip your wrench over again and go back to where you started. And now you, and you can see how it's bent right there. It's either hit something on the road and jammed it up or something like that's happened. Um, the salt from the roads it corrodes these things a lot. And a lot of times, dude, if you got a vehicle from like a northern state or somewhere where it snows a lot, these freaking lines will like corrode together and it's really, they get really hard to break free. Um, that one right there is bent up. You can see it got hit on the road or something like that. Something flew up and hit it and bent up the back of it. See how it's not flush? See how it's popped up, you gotta bend it down? Yeah. It did sound a little weird coming out of my mouth. I got your stubby half in my hand. <laughs> All right, Sean, we got our uh, cooler lines off. Make sure you got something to catch that excess fluid. You, normally, you tuck them right behind the exhaust there, and they're out of your way. Um, next, you need to take off your throttle valve um, cable, and that's a 10 millimeter right here. Next, your torque converter. So come back here with me, Sean. Let me grab my wand of light. My, my uh, lightsaber here. Um, you gotta take this converter loose, and there's three bolts. Personally, I'll take my vice grips along this freaking, along this starter gear here, and just clamp it gently. And then you can, you get the leverage you need to pop these nuts free. <laughs> They're on the right, it's just the lock tight is. You gotta break the lock tight. Uh, normally your axis point is between your oil filter and your, and your pan there uh, but if you can get it out of the way you can do it that way it's fine uh.
right, guys, we got uh, all of our electronics loose, got our converter loose, all that's loose. So we're ready to take our bell housing bolts free. You want to make sure that your transmission is supported by your jack. So you want to make sure you've got some rigidity and some weight on your jack. If you need to, you can throw a ratchet strap around there. We're not going to do it today because I have a helping hand. Um, there's six bolts all around. Normally they're nine sixteenths. You can see how chewed up that is. Somebody over tightened them and didn't put a, didn't put a washer on. What happened? Last bowl out of the dipstick going up here. I got it. Get loose on top. There it is. All right. Clear. Yep. Oh, it's free. All right, we got it out. We're gonna clear off this table. Uh, I gotta clear this off and watch these small parts sweep the floor a little bit. We're gonna tear this thing down. Um, what's up, guys? We just got our transmission out of our 1986 Chevrolet 1500. It's whining really bad, and the fluid's really dark. So let's get into this thing and see what the issue is. Easiest ways to break that seal is pull it out like that. And you can access your servo. Yeah, I mean, there's not even a full servo in it. And he's trying to... He's trying to... <laughs> run a quarter mile with it. You're asking for trouble. As a stock servo, my friend. You get some gloves. Pull these grommets out. Trash. Now, some people might call me unorthodox for using a hammer and a screwdriver, but it works the best. It works the best, I'm telling you. As long as you don't hit the freaking piece like or the part, like just get in behind it. You know, use your brain. Nice and easy. I didn't hit anything. I'm going to do the same with the pump. I don't know why you guys give me so much help for that. I'm using the same thing here. Shout out Husky for the half screwdriver. <laughs> now these are bad to these are bad to leak around this seal. Now this one's flat, super flat. And you can test these by seeing if they have any rigidity when you push in. There's a tad bit, but not a not not a whole lot. Lucky business. In a fifteen. Thanks. Like Michael Jackson on these boys. Here's <laughs> <laughs> my thriller. Now I never, I never drove the truck. Um, he just dropped it off. I didn't actually test drive it. So I'm kind of going in blind here. We'll see. When the fluid's that color and it smells like that, it's, it's never good. You've got some metal there on your magnet, but nothing too crazy. I did notice 
I did notice um, A that this is a non auxiliary unit. And I noticed the 732 on the back. The 732 on the pump body here that normally indicates that it's an auxiliary. But in this case, it is not an auxiliary and they just use the, the pump casing. So this is a non auxiliary 700 R4. Good info there. That's your lockup solenoid. Gotta replace that plug in there. Pop that plug off real quick. Piece of that plug. Check ball. I like to go ahead and flip this valve body over and see if there's any valves that have already locked up. That tells me the valve body's bad. I'm going to go ahead and pressure test this, or vacuum test this rather, um, when I get it washed and all that. But you can go in and individually check each of these valves and see if they move and see if any of them are hanging up. All these seem to be working properly. Yep, the TV had the, the updated uh, spring in the bottom too. But nine times out of 10, these plungers right here, this plunger valve, this is what goes out in these 700 R4s. It allows that pressure to bleed out of that throttle valve and you don't get the line pressure you need. And if that happens, you're gonna have early shifts, stack shifting, and premature three to four clutch failure. Um, but yeah, that's actually a pretty damn good looking valve body. I'm gonna set this to the side. That's a little trash. Alright. Accumulator and spring. Some I'm just gonna pull these uh, check balls out of here real quick. If I don't drop them all, I really need to get some gloves that fit me. That's for sure. All right. You always want to look at your plate. Somebody's done a modification here. I'm going to have to get my template to see exactly what that is. Good little, good little side quest. Little side quest for you. This is your parking bracket. Now, if you want to zoom in here, this little lever. When you rotate your output shaft, it'll lock in. Now that's park. That is just park. That is literally what park is in your 700 R4. And most transmissions are like that too, for in your vehicle. Just a simple lever like that. Nothing too crazy. Oh, somebody's got a pretty tag.
this seal, it will leak. I don't care how you gotta beat it out or bend that to get a new one in. You've gotta take this seal out and clean that freaking, uh, clean that surface in there. Uh, oh yeah, we gotta, again, don't hit the casing. Spin behind it. Let me guess, dumb hillbilly, <laughs> right? All right, so something was whining in here. Let's see if it was the pump. It's got some scoring on it, but not anything crazy. You can see the lines there. Where it dug in, but that's just from debris normally. When debris circulates to the transmission, it ends up in the pump, and there'll probably be some debris in this little filter here. Let's see if we can pull that out. Oh, yeah, that filter seal was bad too, so it was blowing right by. The filter wasn't even catching anything. Yeah, that's why that filter, filter seal went out. A, B, this thing was already contaminated with something, and it got really hot. Close right here, son. I see this a lot. Look how loose that is. And that's a. I don't know if somebody's tried to build this and put it in or what, but if these frictions look new. Maybe it's just worn down over time, it looks like, maybe. Look, it got hot. overruns and your forward clutch pack those look okay these little ones I always replace these are the early early Sprags. The diameter is smaller. Wash that on the shelf. Alright. Reverse input drum. Those don't look too bad either. So it looks like it was working properly, but something was in here. Something was in here grinding. We still haven't found that yet. There's a snap ring in there. Looks like it's on the bottom. There she is. I'll check the side to side play on these, not the up and down necessarily, but the side to side. That one feels okay. A lot of time this 
ring gear will be worn out where it connects in here. And we'll chew these teeth down, but this one feels like it's still solid. Let's see. Do they have a hardened sun shell in it? There's no marks on it. I don't think so. Sun gear looks like okay. There's a snap ring that holds the center support on. You gotta twist it and then pull out like that. Get your seal pick in, 90 degree. Pop it. All right. Clunk spring, no big deal at all. I want to check out this. See, if this is what it was. I mean, they don't feel bad. That's your low reverse clutch pad. I'm not sure what was grinding in here. I don't see anything. Bad character in. Uh, it looks like it just got hot. I'm going to try to rebuild it. Just put it together wrong, but that clutch pack, got a three and four clutch pack. Yeah, you can see how it's folded up. It may have been, it may have been that was making all that noise because it was so loose. Maybe, I don't know. It's making a lot of racket. It's your low reverse piston um, spring compressor. Pull this snap ring and that spring perch out first. Get your air gun. Bottom hole left. All right, now, 700 is completely torn down now. There's nothing else to take out of this thing other than the parking lever, and that's not gonna do, that's not gonna do nothing. Now we established that three and four clutch pack was basically on its way out. Um, I didn't see where the moaning and groaning was coming from. I didn't see where the noise was coming from, so it may be the torque converter. Um, this thing did get extremely hot because the flue is brown and it smells like absolute ass. Kid show, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do a video on building this because we're gonna put a uh, lockup, a hydraulic lockup switch inside of this. Or a hot, we're gonna put a hydraulic lockup uh, kit in this valve body along with some other parts and a shift kit. Go back with a Corvette servo, a hardened sun shell, wide band, um, and we're gonna do a couple other goodies to this. But I've got somebody already wanting this transmission and a turbo 350 is going back in that. So that will be my next video. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Tyler. God bless.